Hey everybody, it's Zach here. Welcome back to Clappable, where I'll be doing another movie review. This time I'm going to be reviewing Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children stars Asa Butterfield, Samuel L. Jackson, Eva Green and Chris O'Dowd, and Judy Dench. It revolves around the character of Jake, whose grandfather when he was young told him stories about how he visited this island where there was a woman called Miss Peregrine who looked after kids who were named Peculiar and were able to have magic powers. So Asa Butterfield's character Jake goes over to this island to meet Miss Peregrine and he gets introduced to their world of Peculiar children where they're in a time loop where they can do whatever they want in the year 1943 when really it's actually in 2016. As he learns more about their world, he begins to learn that it isn't actually the safest world, as Samuel L. Jackson's character is there to perform an experiment so he can become immortal using their powers and time loops for his own advantage. So, as a whole, I was actually really looking forward to this film when I saw the trailer because I thought, this looks interesting, it was like a really dark sort of fantasy sort of type film, and I, I usually like those types of films. It looked really interesting, and it looked really nice, and um, the film itself, my sister went to see it, and she really liked it, so uh, because she really liked it, um, I, I thought maybe I could do it, maybe I could do it for a review after reviewing Doctor Strange, and it had a 63% fresh score on Rotten Tomatoes, so I thought this might be worth it, so my sister went to see the film a second time with me today, so we went um, to the film together, and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is a good film in many ways, and in many respects, I did actually really enjoy it. Um, it had problems, don't get me wrong, I thought that the film wasn't perfect, it has quite a few problems, but as a whole, I actually really got into the film quite quickly, and it was very enjoyable. So, I'll start off with the acting. Now, I will actually say that the acting in the film wasn't exactly the strongest at first, because Asa Butterfield's character, Jake, has just seen um, his grandfather die, and his acting was actually, like, very sort of um, bland. There wasn't a lot of, like, well, oh my god, my grandfather's, you know, dying and stuff like that. You know, it was actually kind of particularly weak at that moment. His his performance actually did get a lot better as the film went on, particularly when people believe him to be sort of crazy and sort of he has to go to a psychiatrist and that sort of stuff. He is a very strong character, and Jake, he sort of doesn't know what to do because his grandfather um, has been telling him stories about um, Miss Peregrine and how he, he sort of visited her um, in... Um, in, like, World War II, somewhere around the 40s, and when he sort of uh, talks to people about what his grandfather saw, because the peculiar children are, of course, um, um, sort of children with magical powers, people, of course, don't believe him, so he's very disillusioned with what his grandfather has been telling him about. We then have Eva Green, who plays the character of Miss Peregrine, and I really enjoyed her performance of Miss Peregrine, because Miss Peregrine is shown to be sort of um, very posh, but at the same time very sort of whimsical, and I really enjoyed seeing what she did with it, because I saw her in Casino Royale, and it was nice to see her in another film again, because I haven't really seen her in very many, if, if only one. So I really enjoyed seeing her performance here. You have Samuel L. Jackson, who plays the villain of the film. Samuel L. Jackson playing the villain of the film. His performance was fine. It was actually quite... It was whimsical, but in a very sort of dark way. And I enjoyed seeing how he played it, especially since he has, you know, white eyes and he's very creepy and stuff like that. His character wasn't exactly the most three-dimensional character, but... He definitely had more of a personality than um, the villain did in Doctor Strange. He had more of he had more of a two-dimensional personality here, which was quite nice. And the father was a very one-note character. His father, you can tell he cares about him, but he doesn't really express much personality, and he doesn't he doesn't really tell the audience or inform the audience in any way what he really wants for his son or anything like that. The chemistry between him and Miss Peregrine was quite nice. Miss Peregrine often kept snapping into these sort of really mysterious phases where she became a lot more serious, which was really interesting, and um, there was a really poignant moment where, not going to give too much away guys, but she um, she asks him to take care of like the, their um, sort of, the children which she's been looking after, and that was a very, um, that was a very sort of emotional sequence. There are a fair amount of one-dimensional characters though. Putting aside Jake's parents, we have the actual children in the um in the the sort of home that Miss Peregrine cares for them for. And um 
I personally thought that these children, they sort of give them those one-note stereotypical sort of personalities. Like, oh yeah, that kid, he has bees inside his body. That kid over there, you know, he's invisible, you know, that sort of thing. They don't exactly have their own... Uh, motives, and they don't exactly have their own personalities, aside from, like, a couple of them are mischievous. Another one is sort of kind of a love interest to Jake, which she was another one of those main characters. For some reason, they don't actually really explain why, but for some reason there's a kid who's quite jealous of, um of Jake, and they don't really explain why he's jealous, and so I was a bit confused about that. Although his character was actually quite interesting with how he, you know, um, creates puppets which sort of do his bidding, you know, that sort of thing. There was also a particularly tragic waste of Judy Dench, because Judy Dench is a fantastic actress, and her character appears, like, um, in the last quarter of the movie, and I think she has about three lines in the whole movie, and then they completely abandon her. She's kind of wasted here, which is a, it's a real tragedy that they had such a great actress here, and they completely leave her out. Then we have the plot, and the plot for Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is actually, it was fine at first. The film, I, it was very relatively easy to follow the plot until about halfway through when they started introducing, in my opinion, some kind of unnecessary storylines. Like, for one, there's this particular boy who's jealous of Jake for some reason, like I mentioned that before. You then have um, this other boy called Victor who died, and as far as I know, the only reason why they introduced that particular storyline was to force the wedge between Jake and and the character Mino, I believe his name was. Eventually, the plot became very convoluted and very hard to follow, and there were so many storylines that were going on. There was one here about this person, one here about that person, one here about another thing going on, one here about something else going on. The film had so many storylines going on that eventually... I was tempted to call the film, at least halfway through, a little bit of a mess, because the film became very confusing. The film just became so messy and so confusing that it really just hurt your head trying to think about it, and I was kind of worried that I wouldn't be able to tell you guys what this film was about, because there's so many things that I was getting confused about. However, it's not a total loss, because the film has an exceptional production department. That includes the CGI, the cinematography, the special effects, the few action sequences, the set design, and the music. All of that is absolutely fantastic. The film is directed by the one and only Tim Burton, and Tim Burton is a real wacky person, and he really does deliver that here. Apart from this film, I've only seen two Tim Burton films, that being The Johnny Depp, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Alice in Wonderland. I have to say that this one has to be my favourite, because... The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film feels like they were trying to recapture the magic of the original Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and they just really didn't capture that wackiness of it. And then the Alice in Wonderland film, that film is terribly subpar on so many levels. The production department is exceptional here. The film has fantastic set designs. I remember the bit where... Jake goes into the ruins of Miss Peregrine's home because, of course, it's been destroyed by um, the bombs that were dropped down in the war. The set design was really beautiful. It was detailed, but it was also really haunting, you know, watching that clock buried in the dirt and stuff like that. That was really, um, that was really powerful to see, and the, the set design really conveyed that. There is also a moment where the character Jake is letting that girl sort of float up into the trees, rescuing the squirrel who was dropping down from the tree, and you know, that scene was perfectly shot. It was, the camera movements were very pulled back, you had a lot of room to breathe. The green screen, because of course she wouldn't have, or if it was filmed in front of green screen, was seamless. And the colour scheme in this film is beautiful. A lot of really dark blues and bright greens. The film is undoubtedly a visual treat, and if anything, that definitely saved its very messy plot, in my opinion. The special effects were also very good. However, as the film went on, and this is another little nitpick I have, I felt that Tim Burton's direction eventually started to fade. The finale of the film takes place in an amusement park in 2016, with the Hollows fighting the children and stuff like that, and this was the moment where I feel like Tim Burton completely lost 
his sense of wackiness. This is where I felt that Tim Burton's direction just went kind of out the window. It didn't feel like a Tim Burton film. Tim Burton, I imagine being very wacky and dark and whimsical, and I just didn't feel that in that particular scene, which was a shame because Tim Burton did a great job at directing the film overall. So, as a whole, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children may not be the best film I've ever seen, but it is very solid and well-directed. I do have problems with it being the messy and convoluted plot. If you really just want a nice-looking film and want to watch a very visually entertaining film, I would definitely go for this film. Tim Burton definitely shows his wackiness for the most part, and with very strong acting later in the film, and some very nice cinematography and very nice production department, this is definitely a well-worth film watching if you just want some dumb fun and don't want to dissect the plot. So thank you so much for watching guys, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below as your opinions really mean a lot to me. I'll hopefully see you in another video very soon. Until then though, take care.